a crazy day today. This is going to be one of those days that you look back and remember where you were or the fact that it even happened. Today we saw oil prices go negative. So it started off at $20 a barrel, which is kind of what to be expected nowadays. And literally in the middle of my PT appointment, I'm literally, I have these earbuds in, and I'm literally listening to oil go down and down and down to $5 and $3 and crosses zero. It goes down to negative $40 a barrel. So you wonder, which even the pundits on TV were wondering, how do you get to a negative number? They said we've never seen a negative number. Basically what it is, is today um, all the April contracts were due for delivery tomorrow at a certain dollar amount. And they just didn't have storage capacity. So it's not like buying stocks. I mean, you're actually buying oil. You're buying barrels of oil. So thousands or millions of barrels of oil. And so if they were going to take delivery, they needed to, to arrange for somebody to actually store the oil for them. But they couldn't find it. Nobody had the capacity, which is crazy. It's not that they didn't want to buy oil, but they literally didn't have a place to put it. And so it got to a point where it got down to $40 and kind of moved up from there. But $40 a barrel, which means people were – literally, it would be like me paying you $40 per barrel just to take the oil off my hands. I mean, that's kind of where it was, which is an anomaly, which is a total anomaly because in May, the contract price for them is like $22. So the reason we bring it up today, it's kind of it's a weird day today. That was that was the thing that really kind of caught everybody's headline is we have a couple oil stocks that we own. So we have Yuko and we have I call it Yuko and PVAC. And so they got murdered today. I mean just there's no second guess around it. But we're not looking again, we're not looking at these values, percent value gain percentage. Really, the goal we have, and if you've watched these videos, the goal is to lower this cost basis. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. So as such, we filled a Yuka order at 135, and Yuka got down to 132. So we bought it literally at the bottom, which is absolutely great news because we're looking at an upside of 11.6, which is a freaking unicorn in today's market. And as such, it oil dragged everything else down and so we were able to get Invesco real estate re down at 285 a share and we're looking at Invesco re and it got down to 285 and then bumped up to 295 so it was honestly the perfect order so it gives us an upside of 6.41 so with that being said we're still in the green outside of these two all of the other stocks we have that aren't oil related are still kicking butt right now. So we're doing everything right. We're at about 5% increase. And overall, we're still at an overall gain of about 34%. So this was an excellent opportunity. The market went down, but this is an opportunity to get absolute bargain basement prices. And it was such a black swan event that we're just not going to see it again. So we, we want to make sure that we commemorate, as I like to put it, we want to commemorate this absolutely horrible day in oil by buying as low as we possibly can because there's no way in the world as the market, when it opens up, and it will open up, at least in phases and onward, the demand of oil right now is nothing. I mean, everybody's staying home, so there's not a, lot of, there's not a whole lot of people driving for the most part as far as commuters. I mean, you have trucks and everything doing it, but the demand for oil is really low. But when people start working again, you're going to see that demand go up. So we're going to buy this as low as we possibly can. So this is literally like Christmas Day for us. So with that being said, we ended up lowering these two. We got Invesco Real Estate, which is right here, and Yuko today. Uh, but on top of that, we ended up I ended up nixing my Ed Noble Midstream Limit Order just because we have enough exposure to that particular segment. I don't really feel the need to go into that anymore. But at the same time, we're going to touch on ERI. We did a limited order buy for them. So with that being said, at the end of the day today, we looked at all the prices. We just typed those in as we normally do. And again, you can click on the link in the video notes 
and it'll take you to this document as well. So we did that. We sorted it by upside. What I also did is I added some new columns. So I looked at our cost basis. That way I don't have to keep going from tab to tab again. And just did a comparison over under. So anything in the red means that our cost basis is higher than what's being offered for us. So it's an opportunity. So in this case, we have Yuko is below that. PVAC is below that. They're both oil stocks. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines is below that. And the two airlines, United and American, are below that. So with that being said, we executed and filled a couple oil stocks today. These two guys right here who killed the NBLX. I'm not doing GNC because they're going to file bankruptcy at some point. We'll see. Still keep my eye on it. Um, but Redwood Trust is still up there. I was debating whether doing that, but 82 cents below what our current cost basis was from 2.5 to 3.3 is a little high, so I didn't execute anything on that. But I decided I wanted to look back on here, and I was at El Dorado Resorts, and I figured we're getting close. It's currently 16.19. Our cost basis is at 14.44 which is a little bit different. So I said, look, if it gets down to 15, let's call it a rounding error in a sense. If it gets down to 15, we'll buy some more and take the low in the market. With that being said, there's a lot of uncertainty. We want to see kind of what direction things are going. In this case, we took a cool, a couple of cool scratch and dent sales. We bought them out, limited our oil exposure, and bought something, ERI, which had an 80% buy rating on it. And again, they're going to be buying Caesar's Palace. So this is one that um, for us is kind of a no-brainer. So with that being said, overall, we are gaining about 5%, but this is the low in the market. I mean, the low in the market, we're still up. That tells you all you need to know about that. But as far as our projection on where we're going to end up, we actually increased that to 600%. And we are looking at a total return including what we invested at 153000 which again is my down payment for the beach house. So that being said, we don't know what the market's going to be. So if we decide to move forward, then what we are going to do, we can cancel these out right now, is we can take this. Um, we have an opportunity if it goes low and if it goes hot, Okay, so if it goes high, we're going to take the gain. If it takes low, we're definitely going to do this. And if we have any particular stocks that just go way lower than kind of the average, because most of the averages were like 3% today, then we might just decide to throw some money at those. But for right now, we're good where we're at. We have a good low point. We keep decreasing our cost value, cost base as much as possible. And we'll see what tomorrow has. Oh. And while we are looking at that, we're going to look at our Dow futures. And I know uh, just from a sentiment standpoint, I was talking to a friend of mine today, a lot of the fundamentals that typically you look at, like P.E. ratios and betas and all that kind of stuff, they're meaningless because if somebody reports like earnings today, let's say report earnings on, on April 30th, it's going to be from January 30th to April 30th. And it's a mixed bag between pre-COVID and, and, and during COVID. So can't really look at fundamentals right now. So pre-market trading is all going to be on, on it's all going to be on emotions and sentiments and things like that. So it looks like it's slated to go down another 220. But with that being said, you never know what the market's going to do tomorrow. So we'll take a look at that and see what happens. Uh, but it might be another scratch and dent sale tomorrow. But with that being said, we're in good shape. The lowest we're ever going to be is 5%. And we are slated for a massive rebound, especially when you look at Braymore Resorts, which are currently doubling our return. So that being said, I'll see you tomorrow. To get more information on the sales cheat code, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. Also down below in the video description, you know, down there, there's a link that takes you to our website that gives you additional content, some additional freebies that we have and gives you information on some programs that we have that have been proven to help people to make sales easy so that you can make the kind of money you want, live the lifestyle that you've always wanted, and not have to struggle in the process. And what might be the coolest thing of all 
is you don't have to put much effort into it. It truly is a cheat code that most people don't know about. And it's a cheat code that can change your life today. So click on the link below and let me help you start to experience these results starting right now.